Hi everyone, Nalbar here. This is going to be my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 19 heroic quest, Raiding the Giant's Vault. And this will be done on the solo difficulty. Enjoy. Hi everyone, Warjack here. To get to this quest, you must go through the Inspired Quarter. This is right off the harbor. This quest is the third in its chain and flagging is required. First you must do the Eye of the Titan and then you'll be able to access the island. This is the Isle of Forgotten Dreams. Here we must first do the quest Reclaiming Memories. Once we complete this quest, we will have access to the next two in the chain. You must do one of them to move on to the final quest. We're going to be doing Raiding the Giant's Vault and as you can see, this is a level 19 solo quest. The rope ends part way down the shaft. Determined to reach the Giant's Vault. You release the rope and drop down into the unknown. This is one of five solo quests in this game. Not including like the grotto and the hall of the mark. The highest level solo quest other than this is level three. So this is something special. Since many players don't actually go through this quest, I'll be taking a bit more time and showing all the nicks and crannies. First of all, when you jump in, you can fall and just drop into this water. You don't have to jump down like I did. Also, you can have feather fall. This quest is flagged as solo. That means you cannot bring a higher link. So if you are a new player and you feel very very squishy without a hireling you might find this a bit challenging but i do not think so here we've got these two rooms on the wall and they indicate the traps this walkway is trapped with force and blasting and a whole bunch of other nasty traps you're not supposed to go up here until you solve the puzzles Even if you get to the top, you will not be able to open up the chest and complete the quest, so don't forget. The first objective is going to be to get a key to open this, open this door. Here we've got this dead end, we'll be looping back around here and dropping in from the top. So from here we need to climb up. There's a few different ways you can go and you all have to go to both sides. So. The order doesn't really make a difference. Now as you climb, there'll be these runes placed around the room. If you activate all the runes on one side of the room, it will then turn on an air cannon at the bottom to allow you to easily jump back up. If you're only going up once, you can just ignore the runes. If you're planning to go back up again, which is very likely going to happen, if you miss something, you would like to return, so having the runes lit will make your life much easier. 
Anyways, I'm going to be taking my time here. It's very easy to fall off. It can be very annoying to climb back up. If you bump your head just a bit, you'll get knocked down. Here I've decided to go to the right side of the map first. So east, I guess. And I'm going to make sure to get all the runes. As you can see, this tree sticking out of the wall, that's an indication to where the entrance is. There's also one on the other side. Here we've got this lever on the wall, it's very easy to miss. This is required, this is one of the two levers you need to pull. This will disable the traps on the ramp. Most quests in DDO are designed for parties, and this one's designed for solo play. I love it for that. Something glints at the bottom of the deep. Here at the bottom of this pool of water is where we find the key to that door. Here we could just turn back if we wanted, but I'm climbing up over here for an optional. Here we've got an optional only sometimes will spawn the name Memphis and you might run past over here and he might not be here so glad I got it on camera don't miss his chest Here if you look down the shaft, this is right above where we were before with the dead end. But halfway down the shaft, there's a little entrance. You can see it on the map. There's some like opening to the left. Or to the west. Here there's a potential second optional. Was the gargoyle. At the end of the video I'll show another clip. I ran back in and redid this quest just so I could get him on camera also. As I said before, I really like this quest, but I know that a lot of players don't play it because it's purely solo, and that means that people who like running with parties avoid it, and people who would like to run solo a lot of times depend on hirelings, and this one does not allow you to have a hireling. Anyways, this leaves this quest in kind of an unpopular place and I definitely get why the developers don't want to make more of these, but 
I really like it, so I'm taking the time to show everything. Right over here, this gap I just jumped over is one gap that will most likely uh, really annoy you. The chances of falling are so great, you miss it, it's like invisible. Also, this side over here tends to knock you off every time you jump. So I'm always very cautious about it, always turning towards the right. And even if I bump myself and fall off, I turn around to the right and I can catch the ledge before falling down. Okay, anyway, we got over here. This time I'm going to go to the left. Just like before, we've got a lever here to pull that will activate this rune. But also there's a little optional over here hidden behind the waterfall. Finding the secret exit gives you a bit of XP and also a chest, so definitely something to explore if you're doing this for fun. I don't think that anybody does this quest for XP or for loot. Yeah, that should be it. We've got both runes activated and we've got the key. So now we can jump down and go to open up that locked door. Here you can see I'm above where the chests are and you can just jump right down actually and land where the chest is, but it's not gonna help you. Even if you land there, you cannot activate the chest or exit before we get the final piece and we'll be doing that soon. Yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of some extra monsters that I didn't kill before. That looks like that should do it. As you can see, you can land on the top before you're supposed to, but it won't help you. Here you can see now that these two runes are activated and I pulled all the runes on the wall. So now this air cannon works. Shortcut back to the top. This is also one on the other side. There you go. Anyways, this is what this gets activated with all the runes on the wall. Okay, enough messing around. Let's go to the end. Yep, that's it. We got the jeweled key. Now we can go and open up the chest. Now that I pulled those two levers, so now all these traps are deactivated. Those are the chests on the side. As you can see, they're locked. They only open after you open up the main chest. Yep. 
So that's it. Short and simple. I, as I said a few times already, I really like this quest. At least for the novelty factor of being a true solo quest, level 19. It's pretty cool. And now I'm going to go and show you the little optional that I mentioned before. Here we go, when you jump down the shaft, you will run into this gargoyle. Um, I would come here even if the gargoyle wouldn't be here just because I want the breakables. Also, you might be farming named gargoyles for your monster manual. So, here's another specific one. And that's it, short and simple. Of course, he's not too tough. I mean, this is not the solo difficulty, so nothing's really too hard. Yeah, that should be it. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in a different video. Bye.